As a 16 year public educator, I know what it's like to be in the trenches. I know the frustration, the overwhelm, the discouragement and the hard work. I also know the successes. The mission of my blog is simple, to help you find your more. More time, more from technology, more student engagement and more hope. to my late night friends. So I know that I've usually been saying tune in at such and such time, but tonight I was at a Christmas party because that's what we do during Christmas time. And so thank you so much to Anna and Jamie. They might tune in tonight. Who knows? They're night owls for sure. But I uh, was at their Christmas party. And so tonight's Christmas tip, because of course this is tech must, I want to share a Christmas tip. I'm going to try to post a video later if um, Dusty's able to send that to me. But we did what's called a socking exchange. And so uh, I don't think guys would probably like this, although maybe you've got a sock collection going on. I shout out to Alan Mueller, Emily's brother, who loves fuzzy socks. Anyway, um, but tonight we did a socking exchange. So if you want something fun to do with your friends, my friends said, we should do this every year. This was so fun. Buy a pair of Christmas socks. Guess what? They have them at the Dollar Tree. Anything that's worth getting is worth getting at the Dollar Tree. Am I right? If I'm right, I want you to say so in the comments right over there. But uh, get some Christmas socks. Take one of the socks, roll it up, and put it in the bottom of the other sock. So it's now like a stocking, but we call it a socking. And then stuff it with 5 or $10 worth of little goodies that you think your friend would enjoy. So nail polish, um, candy, what else do I put in there? I, I did them for my nieces now, so don't tell. If my nieces are watching, hopefully they don't see this. But I put little earbuds in there. Just anything you can get at the Dollar Tree for like 5 bucks, and it was a lot of fun to pull all those goodies out of the bag. And then what you do is you tie it with a little ribbon and you play a switch game. You could play the left right game. Tonight we played one where it said something like switch if you went shopping on Black Friday or switch if uh, you told your children they were on the naughty list and they were being bad or switch if the elf on the shelf or the Christmas pickles at your house. And so we would switch with people. It was a lot of fun. So um, just an idea. So that is another element of Christmas. But tonight we're here talking about something exciting. Hey, Dusty, just a shout out to cutest husband around. Um, but tonight we're talking about day six Techmas, which is my favorite podcast. And I first of all want to start with three reasons why I think you should podcast. And y'all, yes, I will look down sometimes. I'm trying to give you the very best podcast I can and be efficient. So I will look down at my notes sometimes that I made for myself. So three reasons I love podcasts. One of them is an acronym. We know educators have so many of those, PLN, Personal Learning Network. And my podcast enhance my per enhances my personal learning network, my whole podcast subscription area. And if you hear doggies um, in the background, when my husband moves, the dogs feel that they must bark. So just <laughs> real life. This is real life here. So, um, but they're not allowed in this room. So we're going to close the door because there's Keebler. Yes. Hello, Keebler. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Keebler has a peeing problem, so he's not allowed in here right now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> husbands, anyway. Um, but one thing is anything I can do to enhance my personal learning without a lot of effort. Twitter, of course, number one for that, but also podcasts. Connect with a lot of educators who are sharing ideas where you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. Number two, you could make a podcast. So if you're, gonna, if you're listening to them a lot, it can inspire you. And students are so much more likely to have good writing, good project-based learning, if they know they're gonna have an authentic audience. So if you can get them to, um, you know, if you can get them to contribute to a podcast that's about the topics of your class, fabulous. Um, I'm sure there are good ones out there. I don't have any on my list tonight, but if you are podcasting, I would love for, to hear from you. Uh, I, keep, I keep pointing the wrong, this way, yes, okay, that way. <laughs> Mirror image, you know, in the comments box, wherever it is, share your podcast with me. I would love your podcast your students are creating. I know that I'm giving a shout out to Melanie Lejeune. She might be tuning into this, but um, Melanie, who's at Mac Lejeune, M-A-C-L-E-J-E-U-N-E, is at a Catholic high school in, in Louisiana, and she's actually going to have her students start a podcast. So that's really cool. And then my favorite reason to do a podcast, I don't know about you, but in the in Atlanta, the Atlanta metro area all of us have a commute I mean that's pretty much the way it is and so I have every day about 35 45 sometimes a little bit longer commute and so I could just sit there and think about maybe what's going to happen or not happen that day or I could learn while I drive and so let me tell you my very favorite experience with this is coming up when I share my favorite podcast Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers but this summer um, I was on a trip by myself I tried to get people to go with me no one was available 
and I made the eight hour journey to my home state, which is Virginia. Woo, shout out. Um, I'm from a little town in Virginia and it's eight hours away. And you know what? I was kind of though pumped about having this moment to myself. I had made a scheduled stop at a tea house. If you ever get to stop outside of Knoxville in the, at the Chintzy Rose Tea Room, I highly recommend it. Antiques, uh, sweet tea that got written up in Garden and Gun Magazine is the best sweet tea in the United States. It was kind of neat. It had an orange on the side. Um, so I had some little things planned, but you know, the drive in between my little adventures was going to be a little bit of a delay. So come to find out Angela Watson, which is a podcast I'm going to share with you in just a minute, had released this extended 90 minute episode about self care. And I thought this is perfect while I'm driving. I can just relax, take all this in. And so here's a tip for you while you're listening as you drive. Did you know that Siri could take, could take notes for you? Now I have recently um, changed phones. I have an Android now, which some would say is an upgrade. Some would say is a downgrade. I don't even want to get into that tonight. But did you know that you could ask Siri or your Google Assistant, depending on which phone you're using, to take notes for you? So that's exactly what I did. In the summer, I still had an iPhone, so I'd say, Siri, take a note. And she would make a note. So as I'm listening, I didn't want to miss anything in that 90-minute episode, which is really a long episode for a podcast. Most of the ones I listen to are 30 to 45 minutes. Um, but, you know, as I was driving, I was able to take notes without taking my eyes off the road, without being distracted. And when I got home, I'm like, I don't know what happened with that. Have you guys ever asked Siri something you didn't know she could do it? And you're like, oh, she can do that. So it was kind of cool. I just said, take a note. And she was able to. So I got back and I had all these notes for me uh, related to that podcast episode. So there's a tip for you. So learn why you drive, get connected to other educators, and give your students an authentic audience. Three reasons why you should at least be listening to podcasts, but even possibly creating. So I want to share five, six, I'm trying to remember because I changed one out. I'm going to share six of my favorite podcasts tonight, why I like them, just a quick little snippet. And then I also am going to point you to a specific episode that I really enjoyed. So if you're like, okay, I don't want to start. If you're one of those people that doesn't enjoy reading, you're like, just tell me what happens. Then I'm going to point you straight to an episode that I know will give you value. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, I love the cult of pedagogy. I do not love cults. Okay. I know that name is a weird name. It's by Jennifer Gonzalez. Um, I will not say that I love every episode on that particular podcast. While I am into some types of social justice, I do feel like sometimes an agenda is pushed on, on different episodes of different podcasts, including some others on this list. But um, she does a great job of just breaking down the basics of what it takes to be a good teacher. So if you're someone who's looking, she, she goes all the way up to like college professor. If you're looking for behavior management ideas, how to write a good lesson plan, how to use hyperdocs, uh, I'm trying to think of a lot of things she's covered. Just any little basic building blocks. How do I deal with a kid who doesn't like me? She has just really practical episodes. She has a very soothing voice. And so I highly recommend her. And I specifically recommend episode 50. You'll have to go back a little ways because she's like on episode 100 and something, I think, maybe close to 100. But it's called, it's about using playlists to differentiate instruction. Now, because our district has, has just gone to uh, more personalized learning and we've adopted a learning management system, the idea of playlists really intrigued me because the fact that students can be self-paced and they can be working on content that relates to them, I really like that. I also want to give a shout out to Bear Creek Middle School. I don't know if Darren's watching tonight or one of his compadres. They're actually called the uh, Edumigos. I just went blank from it, the Edumigos. But when we visited Bear Creek, they have a whole math lab that is differentiated. The teachers don't know what they're going to be teaching until they get in the next morning because the students are doing um, activities every day that show what level they're on, where they need to be, what lesson they're missing, and then the teachers customize to that. Fascinating to me. So until your district maybe adopts something like that, which is a paid system where everything's done for you, I like the idea of playlists. So again, check out episode 50. The second favorite podcast, and these are not in any particular order, um, I just mentioned it. It's Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. She has a lot of things I like. She has the 40-hour work week club. Um, because I'm not in the classroom anymore, and she specifically says it's four people in the classroom, I have not joined that. But if I were still in the classroom, it's like maybe $150. You join for a year, and she sends you every single week things you can do to cut your work hours significantly. So I recommend that. If you want something free you can look for, you can look up the Teacher Tired Challenge. So, um, hey, Anna. So if you want to just Google that, I've started taking it myself. I've already listened to all the audio. Now I'm going to go back and process the goal sheets that she wants you to do every day. But 
my favorite episode I've ever heard by her, although there are great ones, is the one I mentioned. And you have to actually go on her website to get it, I think because it was 90 minutes. That takes up a lot of space when you're paying for storage. But if you go on her website, you can just search for this. Um, Angela Watson, it's from summer 2017, and it's about self-care. So um, I actually just posted about it as well on Twitter. So if you'll go to, I'm going to put this in the comments right here. Let me activate my mouse. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Susie Lolly, and I just tweeted about it yesterday, the extended episode on self-care. So don't miss that one. It's fabulous. And she just does a lot of, again, a very calming voice where I'm kind of spazzy. Uh, she has a very calming voice. She was an elementary school teacher, whereas I come from middle and high school background. But just a lot of tips on how to be efficient, how to... Um, care about yourself, how not to waste your time. So again, truth for teachers. The other part I like about her, she's a Christian educator, so she has that perspective as well. Number three, and you guys are going to think this is really weird, but I always think about, I guess, as with what I'm doing with these Facebook lives, I always think, not that I need a side hustle, but if there's more in me than what is, what I'm able to give out in a nine to five job every day um, you know where can I develop that and so just out of interest I'm not really making any money yet on the side but I started listening to a couple of business podcasts and their business specifically targeted toward the online market and so a couple of those I want to mention here number one online marketing made easy with Amy Porterfield if you're a fan of Michael Hyatt you definitely will know Amy Porterfield she's a big name she runs a I mean millions and millions of dollars every year she does um, but I really like her because, again, very practical. If I'm going to take my time listening to something, I'm less about the inspirational. I'm more about the practical. That's why these tech pot, these tech mus, I just forgot what it's called, these tech mus episodes that we've been doing um, every day, I've been trying to give you like, bam, 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 here's a tip. You can use this. Even tips about Christmas. I like practical. So um, she is one that teaches you everything that you need to know about online marketing. And you can pay for her courses, which are in the neighborhood of $1,000. I don't have $1,000 right now. So I am gleaning as much more free content as possible. So I want to direct you toward episode 176. If you're thinking about launching a podcast, which is what this episode's about, you can steal her whole pro project plan for podcast. She writes down everything she does. Now, she has a team. You probably don't have a team, but I think it's a cool concept to see what could go into a podcast and then what's your base level and then where could you go from there. And I also like number 182. I have a problem. I mean, I have several, but uh, one of my problems is that I have so many tasks going at one time that I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then I come back to this and it's crazy. And I don't think I have ADD. I just think I am an excited, energetic person that has too many hobbies. But um, episode 182 talks about mega batching your content. So she gives you really practical tips on if you're trying to work toward a long-term project, like producing a podcast, like writing a blog, like things even you're doing in your classroom, how can you batch those together? And that really flows with what Angela Watson talks about too. Okay, my next, number four, if you're counting, favorite podcast is Shalene Johnson. It's another business one. and She has two podcasts, but the one that I like of hers in this regard is build your tribe. You've probably all heard how we need a tribe of like-minded people in the education world. We're looking for educators who make us think somebody out in the world understands what it's like to deal with these crazy parents or this crazy administration or to grade all these papers or whatever the situation is. So Shalene Johnson is a is build your tribe. Hers is from a business perspective, but also a little bit of life coaching thrown in there. Again, I don't like every episode she produces. She goes out on some tangents that I don't agree with. But the Builder Tribe has some really good episodes, including number 121. Um, that one talks about, if I could read my handwriting, <laughs> talks about, uh, for example, this Facebook Live that I'm producing tonight, I could pay a virtual assistant to turn it into other content like an Instagram post or Pinterest pins or, you know, things to go on Snapchat or a blog or whatever, how this one piece of content could be dovetailed into a lot of different things. So if you're someone who's wanting to, you know, be an edupreneur, be someone who's, you know, getting your name out there as far as just outside of your classroom, or you're wanting to create more of a social media presence for your classroom, then I love episode 121 again, because it's lots of content, but just a little bit of work on your part, okay? We're getting to the end here, last two. 
Number five is, although what I'm doing here with Facebook Live and Tech Tips with Susie, this is totally my own personal. That's why I'm in this nice office with, if I can get my hand underneath it, this box of Wheaties. <laughs> this is my office. This is my evening time. But I do work for a great district. And recently, we've start developing, started developing a podcast. It's called Cherokee Tech Talk. We've got about, uh, tomorrow I think we're releasing our 16th episode, maybe 17, but something in that neighborhood. We, we release a weekly episode when we're in school. So on school breaks, I will not be releasing episodes. But all kinds of like real voices. How do you do breakout EDU in your classroom? How does music integrate into the technology world? Uh, let me think of some other ones. How has technology changed since some of the schools have been created? What's it? What are some tips for Twitter and educators? So all of those um, are episodes that have been featured. I will tell you, I'm not going to tell you a favorite because I'm the one who interviews on all of those. I don't want to hurt my feelings, but I will tell you the two most popular and they are these. Um, episode 10 is with Kristen Brooks. So if she's listening, I want to give her a shout out. And uh, Kristen talked to, took us on a behind the scenes tour of her iPad lab. And so if you want to see what it's like to manage students, she manages like a thousand students on a six day rotation. And then all the devices that go with that, check out episode 10. And then episode nine, right before that, digital breakouts with Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer has presented on digital breakouts in uh, several ways. She's been showing them to her, her teachers. She's a media specialist at an elementary school in our county, but also at conferences. Hey, Jennifer. And so if you want to hear something, uh, if you want to hear some great tips on digital breakout, that's another popular episode. And then here we are at the end, my friends, number six, my sixth favorite episode. Y'all don't think I'm cheesy, but I just released a podcast called The Susie Show. Right now, I only have four episodes, but they are out there. I posted three today because I, I wanted to put a few content pieces out there to kind of whet your appetite. But uh, I've talked about flipping your classroom, how to get new students integrated super easily, how to allow students to do some of the work for the teacher and not make it more efficient. So four episodes are out now. I'm going to be producing more of those, but again, The Susie Show. So I know what you're thinking, Susie, oh my gosh, that was so life changing, but I can't remember everything you said. I'm going to go over to the comments box. Yay, I pointed the right direction this time. <laughs> I'm going to go over to the comments box and I will be leaving the name of every podcast that I recommended along with the link. And I would love for you to do something for me. Will you do that? Will you pick one podcast and subscribe? You can either go to iTunes to do that, or if you're using an Android, the podcast app that I use of choice, I want to show you what the icon looks like. It's called CastBox. And let me close this so you can see the icon when it first opens. It looks eerily like um, the iTunes one, which is why I picked it. I thought, oh, iTunes has an Android app. I don't know why I thought that, but it does look the same. So I don't know if you can tell... It's this little guy down here. See how he's even purple? Okay. So if you're on an Android, if you'll get the cast box, oh, look how cute we are. <laughs> if you're on an Android phone, if you'll get the cast box app. If you're on an iPhone, then the iPhone comes with a purple podcast app, just says podcast. And you can subscribe to any of the ones that I recommended. So I really want to hear from you. If anything that I've said on any of the days of Tech Mist, you're like, oh my gosh, Susie, that was so inspirational, or I made your fudge, or whatever it is. I would love to hear from you. So please share this episode, share it with friends, and come back and see me tomorrow, because tomorrow, let me look what's going tomorrow. I don't have it memorized, but I do have it written down. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about creating custom embed codes. So when you don't have an embed code, but you need one, we're going to talk about that. So hope you guys have a great night. Thanks, Night Owls, for hanging out with me. And for the ones who didn't hang out tonight and are going to watch this later on, please leave me a comment. Let you know. Let me know you watched. You guys have a great night. See you on day seven. Hey, guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them. But if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Susie Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.